With Boruto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 9 right around the corner and full spoilers coming to us within the next 48 hours, there is a lot to go over heading into this chapter where we know with absolute certainty that Boruto vs. Kawaki is taking place. It's a long-awaited rematch between these two sons of Naruto, one by blood and one adopted into the family and it's their first clash since the omnipotence took place. Kawaki stole Boruto's life by accident and when he realized what happened, he proceeded to do the most dastardly thing ever by knowingly framing Boruto for the murders of Naruto Hinata in order to make it easier for people to hunt down Boruto and by extension make it easier for him to kill Boruto. It's the first rematch since Kawaki gave Boruto the scar over his eye when Boruto saved Sarda from what would have been a lethal blow during the Boruto vs Kawaki fight that Sarda tried to break up. However, as we saw in the promotional spoiler dropped over on the official Naruto account, Boruto hasn't even laid a hand on Kawaki yet he's already flexing on him and I'm here to say that Kawaki fans the worst might not be over for you so you'll want to sit down and you want to cover those cheeks while saying no diddy because our boy's embarrassment it isn't over yet. By this point we pretty much all accept the fact that Boruto he isn't just stronger than Kawaki he is a lot stronger than Kawaki. We have a few metrics to back that up and we have a couple of statements that either imply it or in the case of Miski outright confirm that base Boruto is stronger than Kawaki but it's about to get a lot worse. What's the one jutsu that we haven't seen Boruto use since he's been back in the village. The one jutsu that his father was famous for spamming and the jutsu that Boruto's pretty good at using himself. The shadow clone jutsu and this is where it gets really interesting. We can't rule out that Boruto as he's flexing on Kawaki he's been using a shadow clone the entire time. It's really not that crazy when you think about it. Look at everything that is going on as Boruto returns to the village right now currently. His sister is being targeted by Jura and Hidari and while he she has been stepping stepping it up and undergoing combat training and she does have monster power inside of her. The thing is is that she doesn't have the skill to control whatever power is inside of her unless we learn that she's got those genius genetics of Minato and inherited the aptitude for chakra control that her mother and grandmother naturally had. If she's got to stumble and bumble her way into grasping chakra control like Naruto did, well a torn teddy bear and a broken vase they're going to be the least of Himawari's concerns but that brings us back to Boruto. The person who knows Himawari the best. If he's back in the village, the only thing that makes the most sense is he knows what's going on right now with his sister. Though, whatever methods this ends up being the case for him to know what's going on, that's going to be crucial, but right now we don't have the answer to how he knows, but the fact is, is that if his sister is in danger, what's more likely to be the case? That Boruto wastes time fighting Kawaki and Delta or he goes to save his sister and by extension his childhood friends before another person he cares for are eaten by one of the Shinju. That's a trauma that will not go away for Boruto, not anytime soon. We all saw the look on Boruto's face when he saw Sasuke as a tree. We saw the tight expression on his face when he was sitting under Sasuke's tree saying that he was sorry he couldn't save him. We saw that whole look on his face when he warned Sarda to just focus on surviving. Boruto has already lost so much. The idea of losing anything more, it is weighing on him and we see him taking the strength needed to continue pushing forward to find a solution to protect those who he cares for and stop the claw grinds from turning people into trees and stop the Shinju from devouring other people who he cares for. Now what's more likely here that Boruto stands around for Kawaki who he senses coming to his location or that he left behind a shadow clone to distract Kawaki while he went after Himawari. Granted that largely in part assumes that Ada wasn't watching him the entire time with their Simrigon when Boruto left the village and when he suddenly reappeared that Ada didn't just lock on to his location because someone in Konoha picked up his chakra signature and Ada gave the information of where he was but based off of what we know regarding her character she gets bored very easily. Her dojutsu is not always active she's not always watching what's going on and the last time that we saw her she wasn't using her Simrigan anymore at least not to look for Boruto because she was looking at the Shinju while informing Shikamaru about what was going on and why the chakra signature sensed by the sensory unit wasn't the real Sasuke but instead a Shinju clone of Sasuke. It's extremely likely that Ada didn't have her eyes on Boruto so the possibility of him having used a shadow clone at that point it isn't the craziest thing. That brings us to the question of could Boruto really defeat both Kawaki and Delta with a mere shadow clone and I venture to say yes to be honest with you. 
Now that will probably piss off Kawaki fans, but I don't think it's crazy to say that the gap between Boruto and Kawaki is just that large. Because Mitsuki, who would be well aware of how strong Kawaki is, was pretty certain that Kawaki stood no chance against base Boruto. Using one Shadow Clone, which splits Boruto's chakra evenly, it isn't the craziest option to take and have a Shadow Clone only having 50% of Boruto's power. It would be enough to take down Kawaki or at least slow down Kawaki and Delta long enough for Boruto to get to Himawari and the others to get them to safety before any potential battle with Jura. Because Shadow Clones can't perform the Flying Raijin as a reminder, if Kawaki destroys the clone, the chakra from the clone just goes back to the original anyway, so there's no harm, no foul. Now, as much as it would be fun to troll Kawaki fans with that, and as a guy who likes Kawaki, I'd make it a point to troll the mess out of them if for no other reason than to hide my own tears at the massive fall that we've been seeing with Kawaki as he's been intentionally torn down in order to build him back up. I want to take it a step further and I want to say why this would be a horrible idea. On one hand, it makes logical sense. Boruto has been making a point to say that Kawaki, on his list of priorities, he's way down the bottom. He's coming across like someone who knows that he's strong enough to beat Kawaki and he can afford to handle more pressing issues before shoving his giant Rasengan balls down Kawaki's throat until Kawaki passes out or you see his reason, whichever is going to happen first. However, if you give Kawaki a situation where he's getting slapped up by shadow clones, I fear this runs the risk of turning Kawaki into a Yamcha situation where his defeat becomes a meme that will forever be taken out of context just as Yamcha's defeat was. Allow me to explain what I mean here. So the brave, honorable Yamcha, who by this point in the story was already stronger than the first villain we got after Dragon Ball's five-year time skip, chose to fight the Cyberman because Krillin had already been wished back to life using the Dragon Ball, so if he died due to some unknown trick by the enemy, they couldn't wish him back. So Yamcha fought with honor against his enemy and defeated this enemy pretty handedly at that, but he didn't kill the enemy because up until that point, outside of King Piccolo, nobody had fought to kill, which resulted in Yamcha getting blown up via self-destruction, and we have the iconic Yamcha pose that has been memed in pop culture, and especially in other anime over the last few decades. I'm of great fear that if Kawaki gets beaten down by Boruto using a Shadow Clone, we might run into a similar situation on the worst end. And on the best end, the best that you could hope for is that this becomes another Kuronai situation where a person like Kuronai, who was hailed as having the best Genjutsu in the village, realizes that even the best Genjutsu user pales in comparison to someone who is a master of the three Tomo Sharingan and has Uchiha blood like Itachi. Either way, if you grab the pencil and book something like this, you run the risk of making Kawaki into a meme. Then again, some people would argue the guy's already become a meme. Because from the moment we first met this guy way back in Boruto Naruto Next Generations, he's been getting put to sleep continuously. He was passed out after fighting the car androids that were sent to hunt him down while Al took care of the members of Team 7. He passed out after fighting against the cyborg Goro. Boro put that boy to sleep with some poison. Damon put him to sleep at one tap. Now in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, everyone is lining up to take a turn on him like his name was Abella Danger or Angela White, which if you happen to know those names, make sure to clear your browser history and wash your hands with holy water and say the sacred prayer Hagoromo for forgiveness. Jokes aside though, while Kawaki does need to keep getting humbled a bit, I think he's in a situation where you have to start giving him protected losses where even though he loses the fight or he gets knocked unconscious, there's always an ash applied to it like we did with the Miski situation where Kawaki was off guarded so you can't really hold that against them having a shadow clone body Kawaki that's not gonna go over too well for his credibility if we're being honest here especially given the circumstances of it being two versus one where the duo of Kawaki and Delta have had a few hacks between the two where they shouldn't get outright buried in a fight yet at the same time though with Boruto at full power, not using any Shadow Clones at all, taking down both of them at the same time simultaneously, would that do more damage to Kawaki than it being a Shadow Clone? This is the same Boruto who is fighting off three Shinju all at once in back-to-back -back fights and had just taken down Code like it was nothing. The very same Code 
that Kawaki said he could probably kill when Code was barely hanging on after taking that Rasengan. And the same Code that Miski implied, he wasn't sure that Kawaki could defeat, which by extension is why Miski did not believe that Kawaki could beat Vord. So it almost feels like it's a lose-lose situation for Kawaki because if he goes at Boruto and he gets two piece like Jura did to him, then the guy has been put to sleep for three out of the last four chapters. And when we factor in, the guy was literally unconscious for a majority of chapter seven. That basically makes Kawaki being put to sleep for just under half the entirety of Boruto Tupu Vortex's entire run so far. It almost feels like you have to have Kawaki avoid fighting Boruto and allow the narrator to show the difference in their power by having them fight alongside each other against someone like Jura, which is what Saharda did suggest in the Hokage office when she said they need to work together with Boruto. It wouldn't be any different than, say, how Sasuke's power was directly measured against Naruto through Sasuke's reactions and internal monologues of people like Sasuke himself and Orochimaru during the tail end of the fourth Ninja War. That was a proper way for the audience to see that, hey, Naruto's this much further along than Sasuke is. That might be a better pathway to take if we're being honest because Kawaki right now serves that role of he's supposed to be like the quote unquote rival of the main character but right now the only thing that Kawaki is rivaling is he's getting his ass beat so many times that Code is somewhere sitting there saying wait a second the dude just stole my whole flow I don't understand this he's coming off like an edgier version of Konohamaru, which that's not what you want. Kawaki's a character that you want to feel like he has a legitimate chance to cause Boar to some harm. And right now, I don't think any of us believe that's possible. But if this man does end up getting beat down by a shadow clone, not only is that going to be embarrassing, but those stocks are Kawaki, they're going down faster than Kakashi beat down Rock Lee during the blank period, which this video on the screen goes over that story in detail.